Up, of course, uh, one half of U2. This is their uh, new CD, simply entitled Pop, and currently touring the country. We're delighted that they've stopped by for a visit. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Mullen and Bono. Oh, God, God bless you. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later. Thank you very much. Fidel Castro gave me that. Yeah. Hey, Welcome Lane. to the show. Thank you for being here. How, how are things going? All right? They're great. Yeah. It couldn't be better, actually. Yeah. Are you enjoying touring with the, uh, the show? Yeah, it's, it's a great show. You know, we're out there with a giant 40-foot lemon. What's what the deal with the lemon? Why is there a 40-foot lemon here? Well, it could have been an artichoke, but uh, <laughs> we were looking for a practical fruit. Well, there you have something then, don't you? Yeah, no, it's a cool thing. You, you happy so with the it, lemon? I'm happy with the lemon. There's, there is something quite funny about four paddies walking out from a 40-foot lemon. Whose you know, idea so? was the lemon? Uh, I think the lemon was last seen in a vodka tonic. I don't know. I mean, when you're in a band, you're in a band, you get these big ideas, and unfortunately, <laughs> people is build it, them. And is it a little spinal tapian? Yeah, I hope so. Somebody's <laughs> got to have the b to stare that down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you know, uh, rock and roll has kind of gotten a very miserable, very dull, especially like white rock and stuff. And we want to be the brightest, sort of boldest, baddest band in the land. You know, do yourself a That's favor. What we're doing. Next time you're performing, next time you're recording, add a couple of these. There was somebody in the crowd doing that earlier. Yes, I know. Something to do with a roadmap, I believe. <laughs> Isabella Rossellini. Oh, she's lovely, isn't she? She just told me that she was going to be my guardian angel while I was there. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's very sweet of her. That's the kind of woman she is. She's very nice. Yeah, uh, and, uh, yeah but she really likes drummers. <laughs> So you, you actually, this was your band. You started the band and wanted to fire uh, Bono, is that right? I did. It was funny because, uh, you know, in Dublin, 1976, there wasn't a whole lot to do, you know, sort of join a band or play football. So we started a band and uh, I, I did try to fire him because in 1976, he wanted to take a lemon to America then. <laughs> so. But as you can see, he came back crawling on his hands and knees, and here we are. But, but no, seriously, how early into this did you think that he wasn't going to be right for the group? I mean, was that true? Is that serious? It wasn't that kind of thing. I think there was, there was an incident in, uh, in America where um, we had a little bit of a misunderstanding, and he threw a drum kit at me, and I sort oh. of felt at that stage <laughs> that it was time for him to leave. But uh, as I... Said he came crawling back on his hands and knees. Yeah. Gave me my first. He, this man gave me my first and only job. It turned out pretty well, didn't yeah, it? Don't yeah. you forget it, pal. I won't forget <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys, uh, do you do you have an actual uh, friendship? Do you have an actual relationship with Frank Sinatra, or is this just a guy you know that you've met? Do you spend time with him? Well, we are fans. I mean, it's like we are all just, you know, orbiting in Frank's universe as far as I'm concerned. But we did meet him in, in Las Vegas. We went over a big fight and then we met him, saw him play and met him afterwards. And he was very cool. And, and then I got to sing with him. In fact, it's quite funny because uh, we got a fax from Japan, I think it was from Nippon EMI, about a duet with myself and a Mr. Frank Sinalta, and the duet was called <laughs> I've Got You Under My Chicken. <laughs> and that's when things started getting very surreal in this band. That was way before the lemon. Do you... <laughs> do you socialize with the man? Do you, have you seen him recently? Well, we found, I mean, I, I haven't seen him recently, and uh, I wouldn't call myself a mate of the chairman of the board, but I, we, we, you know, I went to his house. And you spent time at his house? He can drink. Yeah. Can you keep up with Frank Sinatra? I mean, he's uh, close to 80 years old, isn't he? I'll be honest with you, I, I can't keep up. And, if, <laughs> I, and I tried, and uh, in fact, he, took, he showed us a movie in this beautiful, you know, snow-white screening room that he has. And it was a movie, and I'd had a few of those stiffies that he puts together, and, <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, okay, during the movie, at Frank's place, I, I, I fell asleep. Just, yeah. and, and, and when I woke up, okay, it was just this horrible, horrible dampness between my legs. <laughs> and I thought, 
I'm, I'm actually serious. I thought this is dreadful. This is serious Irish defeat to Italy. <laughs> but, but in fact, I didn't know what to do. What do I say? Well, I just wait. Well, I just, what do I do? I just close my eyes, pretend I'm still asleep, and then skip off. But, but it was just a Jack Daniels and Coke. I think. It just, so you just. <laughs> yeah. cool. So the story has a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> But he, he kind of responds to you guys as, as musicians and as just uh, performers, guys out there doing it, doesn't yeah, he? He talks to Larry, actually. The thing about I guess people in, um, in um, his world don't talk a lot about music to him, maybe, mm -hmm. as much as you'd think. I mean, Larry, what He loves drummers, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. No, he was, he was... I mean, I only met him very briefly in Las Vegas. And uh, he, um, he, all he wanted to talk about was um, Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich, who just died. Yeah. And real music fan, and that was kind of surprising, because there were a lot of people around him, a lot of stars, and he's not known for liking rock and roll, so um, it was kind of nice. Yeah, it's In fact, at the, at the concert, when we went to his concert, he did this, you know... He introduced us from the stage, and apparently he doesn't do a lot. This we is in Las Vegas? Yeah, in Las Vegas, we do we stand up and do the wave thing, <laughs> the show yeah. business thing. And we all stood up, and, and uh, I think it was a while ago, we were <clears throat> dressed in the way we were dressed, and he just looked at us, and he just went, whoa, you may be number one, but you haven't spent a dime on your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's cool. He's uh, cool. Where are you guys off to now? Where are you working now? What's, uh, what's the summer like ahead of you? What are we doing? Well, we go to Canada Wednesday and travel the rest of the U.S., go back to Europe, and come back again, so... Quite a bit of We're just kicking this, you know, it's a sort of tired old thing. Rock and roll has just gotten too safe. It knows what it is a little bit. And we're just trying to kick it up the arse a bit, send it into there the next go. century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you know, have a great day. Thank you, Bob. All right. Thank you, man. Nice to meet you. We'll be right back.